Thank you so much, uh, Representative Raskin and Mr. Speaker. It's great to have you presiding over the chamber as well. It's all our new members here. Um, Mr. Kana, Representative Kana from California, who's going to be taking over as co-chair of this special order hour for the Progressive Caucus. Mr. Speaker, um, we have to make sure that the American people understand exactly what's going on. This is a bill that the Senate has been negotiating in private. It's been 13 men discussing health care for all Americans across this country in a secret room. That's really what's been happening. And today we saw a draft of this bill and the prevailing wisdom when the bill passed the House was that the Senate would completely revamp the bill. But according to, to the New York Times, I'll quote the New York Times today, it said the Senate bill once promised as a top to bottom revamp of the health bill passed by the House, instead maintains its structure with modest adjustments. It's the same bill. It's the same bill. And in fact, in some ways, it's a little bit worse because the cuts to Medicaid, while they don't take effect as quickly and they're more gradual, they're actually deeper than the House cuts to Medicaid. There's other things in the bill that have been done really in part to affect how the American people see the bill, but don't, don't change the basic provisions of this bill. And part of the reason they delayed the cuts to Medicaid is so that they, they hope that they can get a better CBO score, congressional budget score, which the American people should know the last time around, the second time around after the first time the bill was about to come to the floor and then it got pulled from the floor because there weren't enough votes in the House, the second time when it did pass, it passed without a CBO score. It was not scored. And the reason it was not scored was because there was a belief that that very narrow passage in the House would not happen if Republicans and Democrats found out that the bill, as, quote, revised, was actually just as bad. So the bill that passed the House still took away 23, took away health insurance from 23 million Americans. So this is where we are today, a bill that's been crafted in secret, but is essentially the same bill. And I have received more than 9,000 calls and letters from constituents who have been very clear that Congress needs to do all it can to protect our seniors, to expand Medicaid, and to defend the gains that have been made over the last seven years. And you know what's really... Um, ironic about this whole situation is that if you think about some of the things that Republicans said about the Affordable Care Act when it was being passed, here's a quote. In 2010, Speaker Paul Ryan said, after months of twisting arms, Democratic leaders convinced enough members of their party to defy the will of the American people and support the Senate bill, which was crafted in secret behind closed doors. Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell said, when it comes to solving problems, Americans want us to listen first and then, if necessary, offer step-by-step -step solutions. But they're tired of a process that shuts them out. They're tired of giant bills negotiated in secret, then jammed through on a party-line vote in the middle of the night. That's what Speaker Ryan said and Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell said when the Affordable Care Act was being debated. But here's the thing. When the Affordable Care Act was being debated, Democrats actually threw open the doors in Congress. They held over 100 Senate hearings. I wasn't here. This is based on actual reports and documents and files from, from Congress. Over 100 Senate hearings. 25 consecutive days of consideration and 161 amendments from Republicans. Many of those amendments were accepted into the bill. This is a completely different process. We didn't have a single hearing on this bill. The bill came to the House floor and there was some debate but it certainly wasn't 100 hearings. It wasn't 25 days of consideration. It, there weren't 161 amendments. There weren't any amendments that were accepted from Democrats because there was no amendment process. 
And now in the Senate, we're going through the same process where a bill that is about the health care of tens of mil hundreds of millions of Americans across this country is about to come to the floor and they are not going to accept any amendments, certainly not from the Democratic side. Maybe they'll take a few amendments from the Republicans before it comes to the floor. I don't know. We'll have to see. But there's no debate on this. And how can we talk about the process of democracy and even of civility and the ability to work together if we don't offer the other side a chance to stay in? This bill will take away health insurance from millions of people, and it will make it less affordable for those who still have insurance, because it's not very different from the House bill, and we already know that that's what the House bill does. It would raise out-of-pocket costs for middle-class families with higher deductibles and cost sharing. It would essentially defund Planned Parenthood by blocking people with Medicaid coverage from accessing preventive care at Planned Parenthood health centers for birth control, cancer screenings, and STD treatment and testing and it would cut the essential health benefits protections. Now, what is the essential health benefits protections? A lot of Americans, we talk about that phrase, but a lot of Americans don't know exactly what that means. So here's what it means. It means that if you buy insurance, then you can be assured that that insurance is gonna cover certain things. It'll cover, for example, hospitalization. It'll cover, um, you know, if you get cancer, it'll cover some of your treatments that you need for cancer certain things that are included in that. Mental health care is part of that essential health benefits coverage. That's what it means. Otherwise, an insurance company can sell you something and it can even say we cover you know, X, Y, and Z, but when you get to the hospital because you're sick, It'll, you'll find out that it doesn't actually cover hospitalization. So this was an attempt to say there's sort of an essential understanding, an essential set of things that would be covered. We will guarantee you that they'll be covered if you, have, if you buy insurance. Now, I want to talk about Medicaid for a second because this is one of the biggest travesties of the, of the bill that is being proposed by the Republicans in the Senate bill would literally decimate Medicaid. And between the Medicaid cut of over $800 billion in the, in the health care bill in the Senate and the budget cut that's proposed of over $600 billion, let me be clear that we're talking about almost a $1.5 trillion cut to Medicaid through these two mechanisms. And I wanted to talk about what Medicaid is because a lot of people might think that Medicaid just covers poor folks, which frankly I think we should cover poor folks, let's be clear about that. But I want to tell you what Medicaid actually of all nursing home residents. It covers 30% of all adults with disabilities. It covers 39% of all kids in this country and 60% of kids with disabilities. So if you cut half of Medicaid, which is what $1.5 trillion cut to Medicaid would include, it would be half of what we spend on Medicaid today. A program that covers 74 million Americans across this country. 38 million Americans would lose their coverage. So no wonder, as Mr. Raskin said, this health care bill has had such low approval ratings in the House and, and now it's the same bill in the Senate. Because Americans understand that whether you live in blue America or red America, whether you live in rural America or urban America, whether you're a man, a woman, or a child, whether you're young or old, one of the great things about this country is that we are a country that believes in trying to provide for people when they get sick. Now, we've been trying to do that for a long time, and until the Obama administration and this and the Congress passed the Affordable Care Act we weren't doing that but in Washington state my home state when we passed the, the Affordable Care Act Medicaid expansion allowed us to cover an additional 600,000 people across our state we cut the uninsured rate in half and we created over 22,000 jobs across the state including in rural areas so 
what we need to do now is to stop this bill from moving forward because it would be bad for the American people. It's that simple. It's going to kick grandma out of her nursing home. It's going to stop a kid with asthma from getting an inhaler. It's going to put a premium on being an elder American. If you're an older American, you're going to pay four to five times as much as anybody else. Why? You just have to ask why. So who benefits from this bill? This bill is a transfer of wealth from middle class Americans to the wealthiest Americans, corporations in this country. So this is about tax cuts for the richest. Sheldon Adelson, who's a Republican donor, casino magnate, he will get, if the Senate bill passes, he will get a $44 million tax cut in 2017 alone. How are they paying for that? Cutting Medicaid, taking away protection for pre-existing conditions, for seniors, for average Americans. Mr. Speaker, that's just not right. It's not right if you're a Democrat. It's not right if you're a Republican. It's not right if you're an independent. It's just not right. And yes, the president is correct on this point. It's a mean bill. It's mean, it's cruel, and it's unjust. And I hope we defeat it. And I thank the gentleman for yielding and yield back.